Hi, I'm Tim Roble and welcome to another episode of Adventure Athlete. Today I'm here to talk to you about tires on my Can-Am Maverick XRC. So we are one week uh, from coming back from the hammers and I'm implementing some of the things that I have learned. You've noticed that I got a tire off and the spare tire off. One of the main things that I learned out there crawling the vehicle is I wanted a bigger tire than the 32 inch. So these 32 inch Maxxis Liberties, um, which were an aftermarket purchase, um, this machine comes physically with the same tire, but it's a 30. So I went up on tire size on that, which I think was a good, uh, a good option to go. Um, I've decided I want to build this car as kind of a king of the hammers, slightly a race car pre-runner. I want to build it to race specs. I'm not sure if I'm going to race it or not, but I want to be have that ability if I um, if I choose to. Uh, I've raced out there four years, King of the Motos. Uh, now King of the Motos is gone, um, so the UTVs would be the next uh, step to that. I'm very familiar with the trails and the terrain out there. I uh, love the Hammers. I've spent a lot of time out at the Hammers, and um, you know I think I would have a pretty decent shot at going out and. Um, running the race and I, I think I could finish in podium so uh, that's a that's a huge statement um, but you know it depends on how much prep and pre-run and notes and getting through the desert um, you have to get through the desert somewhat quick to avoid the bottlenecks in the rock sections so what I noticed out there is most of the race cars were on 32 inch tires um, the top five came across the line they were in B, running BF Goodrich uh, the 32, 10, 5, 15s off the top of my head. So I'm a little different. I like to push the envelope a little bit more. And my plan is, um, I think I talked about this before, is going up to 35s. So I've reached out to all of the manufacturers out there. And so far I've had two um, that have given me an opportunity to test some tires. So what I have here is... The uh, Tenzer 35 inch DS tire. Now, these tires showed up first, and then the wheels showed up just about a day ago. The wheels came raw. Um, I powder coated them in my powder coated uh, oven and got everything set up and ready to go. So, physically, this 35 inch tire weighs 45 pounds, and um, the tread is uh, 34 and about a half with 10 pounds of air in this setup. Now this is an extremely uh, stiff tire. I'm not sure how well this tire is going to work in the rocks. I know from the tire's design, just looking at it, you can see we have the ribs here, but the durometer of the rubber is super hard and they do not make these in a soft compound yet. Um, I'm hoping that Tenzer will listen to me a little bit and um, do a run of these because this would be a great tire setup for King of the Hammers. Um, it's a robust, lightweight tire, um, and it's it's gets you the ground clearance that that I say I would like under the car. Can I run it with 32s? Yeah, I ran all the trails on 32s, but um, I think you can do better with a 35. For comparison, here I have this um, golden uh, sticky that I, I use for sometimes for enduro cross or extreme enduro. So we can kind of take a look at these uh, these knobs. And you can see I can squish them and, and turn them. So the durometer, how soft or hard the rubber is, is uh, relatively soft on this tire. We come over here to the Tenzer, and it is, it's like a, a sports car, you know, Pirelli P0 or something. It's, it's a hard compound. Uh, this tire will last real well in the desert, but like, once again, I'm not sure about the rocks. So the next two arrive were the um, Maxxis Rockzillas, the 35s. And these tires physically weigh 56 pounds a piece. So we're uh, quite a bit heavier, what, 11 pounds heavier than the Tenzer. Um, we're on a 14 inch wheel. Uh, those are the factory bead locks, which that's kind of nice. You don't have to go buy wheels. You can just put these on. Um, we can see uh, tread width and depth is a lot gnarlier on these um, Rockzillas, these Maxxises. And you can see we have siping into the lugs. And the durometer on these is similar to the uh, the golden. It might even be a tad softer. It's a nice compound. Um, that would be a tire that I would choose to run 
in the rocks. Like we're going to uh, rally in the rocks uh, in May. This is the tire setup, tire and wheel setup I'm going to run. Both of these right here are set up with uh, 10 pounds of air. And I don't think I mentioned the Maxxis uh, measures out right about a 33 and a quarter. Um, so we have the Tenzer is a little taller of a tire. If we uh, wheel this over here, both of these are set up with 10 pounds in them. And we can see we have a, a slightly bigger tire by maybe about almost an inch. Let's see if we can get that on camera looking good. And here's the side-by-side -side on those. Um, the Maxxis physically is a uh, more of a tread. Um, and it, it, the tread depth is uh, considerably more. But uh, what the Maxxis will not do, from my experience, um, compared to the Tenzer, is it will not run through the desert ruts super great. Uh, every one of these knobs is always trying to pull you out of the ruts. That's my experience with race cars. Um, that's why you see BFG uh, and Tenzer making a tire like this with these ribs. These ribs are also puncture, uh, helps uh, to keep the tire more puncture resistant. And um, that will keep you uh, centered in the, in the ruts and not try to keep pulling you out and you have to fight the wheel for that. Next up was we have a uh, the take off the 32 inch Liberty on the factory beadlock. I'm getting ready to uh, bust that tire down and install a Rockzilla. While we're talking about tires and breaking them down, I'll go over here to the machine that I use. Um, you can find these on eBay, uh, right around $100, $106 uh, delivered with free shipping to the house. Um, I have made a few modifications because that's what I do. On breaking the tires down, I just stuck this uh, this lower in the notcher, and I notched both sides of it. It just makes it easier to pull things and put things in place, and then it doesn't take away from any efficiency as you're trying to break the tire. You can also see that I've put down some Gorilla Tape uh, to kind of help protect the wheel. I, um, you know, you don't want to spend the money on all this stuff, and you know you're going to beat it up a little bit in the rocks, but you don't want to beat it up at home. Uh, doing I'll say aggressive or shoddy maintenance. So um, for me, I try to take my time um, With these beadlocks we can see we have you know, like a beadlock ring and in a lip here And uh, what what that does is it makes it very easy to mount a tire you can take a tire and or a rim and clamp it to the machine and then Take a tire and physically just kind of take it and then push the the bottom lower bead down here in the V and just kind of push the tire on. You don't have to use a, a large tire iron or any crazy um, equipment. Um, I'm able to break this factory wheel down and put a new tire on. Um, I've already done these because I've already mounted these. I've already used NICs on all the bolts on the Can Am. So I'll take a look at that as they come off. But uh, the last tire or last rim I did was good. Um, I use a, um, the anti-seize uh, on the bolts. Now, these KMC Attic 2s are a 15.5 with a 2.5, 2.5, or a 0 offset. Um, that, uh, that puts the, the rim exactly uh, kind of uh, in the middle, uh, or the face of the rim, in the middle of the rim. What that does for this XRC is that it's going to add 5 inches of width. So I'll, I'll be 77 wide with these tires and wheels on it. Versus with the uh, Maxxis, I'll still be at the 72. So things to think about. Um, back to the thread um, uh, NICs. Um, I've had the experience uh, through the years of doing bead locks. And I do find that um, the NICs is a good way to go. A lot of people say it's not a necessary step. I say as soon as you break a stud off in there and have to replace either the insert or drill and uh, easy out it out or... Um, retap it's it's a pain in the butt so just a little bit uh, you know bottle of this stuff is like 10 bucks at any of your parts stores or you know ordering on Amazon um, it's well worth uh, just doing that right um, here's the three tires set up um, you can kind of see physically the the Tenzer is a huge tire compared to this 32 dismounted Kind of a a nice comparison. Um, my my initial, initial thoughts on this is, man, I wish Tenzer would make a soft compound on these uh, these DS tires. Um, I think that would be a perfect KOH 
uh, tire. Uh, on that, uh, if you like this type of thing, uh, hit like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to be doing a series of videos like I did with the, uh, the adventure truck. I think I've done 45 videos now on the build of the adventure truck and how it's working. So if you like that type of thing, you want to see what I do. Um, I have tubing for the cage already all set up and ready to go. I'm going to build a high visibility uh, cage that allows me to see out of the car better than what the factory is. Um, other than that, that's going to be it for now. If you have any questions, comments, hit me up below in the, uh, in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. Um, I'm a little backlogged right now because I was at uh, King of the Hammers and <laughs> I probably have 20 uh, comments that I haven't replied on because I wasn't able to do it daily out there and I'm still trying to catch up now and trying to get some of this stuff done uh, before it starts raining again. Um, that's going to be it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm Tim Rubble, and I'll catch you here next time.